I tell you what, there's a lack of oxygen up here with the, the amount of size that's just entered the room. Me and me and Rick Dog we're struggling to breathe in here ourselves, but then the big man Jerry Susu, most most recognisable just lately, obviously on the program Match Fit, uh, with the number oh, of awesome. old boys that show. have run around on their health journey. We're just talking a little bit about that, but he's joined us uh, this morning in the studio, my good mate and uh, the ex-player of the Warriors, of course, New Zealand. Um, and now current welfare officer down there at the Warriors, Jerry Susu. Good morning, Jez. How you going, mate? Hey, morena, talofa. Good, uh, good morning. Good to uh, good to be on the show. And uh, hey, what an introduction. <laughs> I will uh, try and bring my tank of oxygen next time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mate, let's, let's start with match fit. You're like, mm. um, you know, y- yourself, a number of the old boys, Sionne, Franny, Franny uh, Hens, just to name a couple, mate. How how was it uh, reconnecting with the boys and, and getting back out there on your own journey? Because I know yourself um, dropped a bit of weight. Uh, and just you know, the the whole journey looked like it was something pretty special. No, it was. Um, you know, we started in November and um, trained till February. Um, Ruben Wiki, Taweta, and um, and even Paul Rohi he had us uh, in terms of training. You know, those guys, Kimpi, that next level, eh? Um, yeah. And so, you know, it was a good good journey. Um, it was a lot of banter, obviously, you know, the boys um, teasing each other. And um, so, no, it was good times. Um, but, you know, there was an important kaupapa, and it was just to encourage our community in terms of making changes and, you know, having the courage to make those, cha- uh, those changes so that, you know, um, could have some positive outcomes for our health. And I think the one of the positives, Jerry, appreciate you coming on the show, mate. I uh, love watching you don that Warriors jersey, create havoc out there and just throw your body around so I could understand you probably <laughs> carrying a few niggles around. But, mate, the impact with that show that you've had on the, the Pacific uh, community, have you seen a lot of change there? I know that's a big talking point, uh, looking after your health, uh, staying active. Have you been out and, and seen a change in the community? Oh, massive, massive. I still live out South Auckland, so um, it was weird getting stopped at the gas station again, uh, like back in the day when Kimpy was coaching us. Um, and um, not not for not paying, but, um, you know, they were like, hey, you know. Hey, one time a guy jumped off his bike, you know, one of them bikes, and uh, all dressed in black, and that had the patch on the back, and he was like, you know, he come up, and he was walking quite assertively, and I was like, oh, jeez, I'm in trouble. Whose cousin have I um, <laughs> pissed off back in the day? Anyway, so he comes up, and he's like, hey, Jerry, I just want to say... Um, enjoying the show i'm on my own journey you know and i thought oh man that's neat and so you know awesome. jumps back on at the big um dreads and everything and then off he went so you know we we you know the, the impact has been uh, um uh, far and wide and um and i think that was part yeah. of the reason the boys jumped on it and we're just uh, appreciative that we could be useful in terms of our stories how how easy was it to di- uh, dial back into that headspace you might have had when you were an athlete uh you know because you, you gotta have a bit of certain amount of willpower to push through sometimes and things are difficult no, that's right. We're lucky we were trained by Kimpy. No, wait. No, <laughs> no just jokes, just jokes. No, no, it was, it was um, you know, some things don't leave you and, and muscle memory, you just got to dig deep to try and find it again, um, uh, to draw right back there. But no, no, it was good. You know, some habits or some things you, um, you know, never leaves you in a sense. So it was just about a, a tapping back into that and, and so, yeah, that was good. Uh, but, man, it was still, it was, man, it was hard, you know, when the body's uh, not used to it. It took a while to get yeah. back in the groove. But, um, you know, after about three weeks, I think we were, you know, the boys were loving it. Yeah. And it, and it looked like you awesome. got, guys were having a bunch of fun with it uh, as well. Mate, you're, you're, you're obviously still involved in rugby league, and it's been a hell of a journey so far seeing the team get back to New Zealand, first and foremost, because I've been away for a couple of years with COVID. Um, but the way that they're performing, what's... What's it feel like back being back at the club? I know that you know through the COVID mm. period you you sort of shifted roles to down the road to NZRL, but now you're back into the club. What's what's the feeling? What's different about the club this year? Uh, you're right, Kibby. Um, there is a different feel, and um, I think Webby's made a point of this. And and he, you know, I was I was talking to Monty Beefham uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, we can't help but feel like there's echoes of 2001, 2002. You know, yeah. when we went on that journey, Kimpy, mm. uh, and the club, we, we turned a chapter in terms of the club's history. And I, I feel like we've turned another chapter. And um, great bunch of guys at the moment. And like I say, uh, Webby's been the guy. You know, young coach. You know, um, mm. doing his thing and a great communicator. You know, like I say, very similar to, you know, uh, twenty odd years ago mm. when we, you know, made a difference in terms of the NRL landscape. So. Um, boating well at the, at the moment in terms of where the club's at and in terms of leadership, in terms of um, the feel and in terms of the culture of the place. What I've noticed, Jerry, is uh, a real connection to your identity and mm-hmm. the past history that 
players like yourself have have created at the Warriors. I think they went away from it for a wee while there, and and I'll, you probably you know. Um, I agree with that kind of comment, but you've kind of come back. So what kind of impact are you having with the players? Like, are you got a real hands-on kind of role within the group? Are you getting around that, that Ford pack who has been dominant at the moment? So surely you are. Like, what was your role entail? Oh, well, Izzy, since you put it like that, hey, it's all me, mate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I haven't done these interviews. Uh, no. Um, no, it, no, it's been a cool role. It, the role is is basically a mentor, right? You're just walking with guys yeah. that are down a path that you've been down. So it's just advising and um, in many ways just trying to help them avoid the pitfalls that might trip them up uh, so they can present themselves. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, it's all the coaching staff and uh, Webby. Um, and there's a good bunch of senior guys here at the moment, eh, uh, that are driving mm. um, the culture and um, even our uh, New Zealand identity. Uh, Webby was keen right at the beginning to um, tap back in. Who are we as New Zealanders, as the New Zealand Warriors? And, um, you know, Wairangi Korpu's come on board. He's leading that in terms of um, tikanga and um, really uh, embracing that in terms of who we are. And so I think there's all neat elements that the clubs are growing in and, you know, that adds to the success that they're currently having on the field. Jerry, there's um, probably one thing that is missing from the current team. Outside of AFB, there's not really that big body prop like yourself back in the heyday that can really bend the line. Uh, is there anybody in those youth ranks that you're seeing that you're working with coming through that you reckon could fill that for the Warriors in the, in the future? Yeah, no, there are some young guys coming through, but at the same time, it's a, it's a slightly different game, you know, so it just depends on how you use that and, you know, what kind of strategy you're going to go with. But you're right, Adam is, she's he's next level. So it, it, part of it's probably just getting him to um, mentor some guys and um, because, man, his skill set through the roof, eh? And so... Um, uh, there are some kids coming through. Uh, Andrew McFadden's in charge of the pathways, and um, he's doing some good work. We're bringing back a whole heap of teams. So, um, if anything, we just want to um, keep all the junior talent here and allow them a pathway, whether it be from the Howard Corners where we played Ricardo or or anywhere else. Did you know that? Did you know that? Is he? These two played together. Mate, Ricardo, Ricardo and he, he was the man back in the day, I tell you. Uh, How did Ricardo strapping, go? Strapping Tell us about Ricardo, that. please. Well, I tell yeah. you what, he, he went, uh, back in the day, he, he had the mullet, and um, the mullet was flowing, and he could score a try, uh, our Ricardo. And his, mom, his mom used to come on the field with umbrellas and everything. So that, that's that was, that was someone else's mum? Okay, up to you, Ricardo. You tell the story. <laughs> he's, he's, he's doing me he's, he's doing me good there he's doing me good Jerry because he was the one he did all my tackling for me <laughs> good times good times oh, so good so good we're going to have a couple of messages coming through from Scott Jerry is the man definitely I uh, agree with that uh, text message. One from Jamie. Loving the show, guys. When you speak to Jerry Susu, can you please ask if he knows much about Ali Lawatiti's nephew, who has been named to play against the Raiders? That is Ali Leatoa, who is playing in the centres. Can you give us a little insight to him? Oh, mate, absolute talent. Um, he has been in the system a while, uh, since he was 14 mm. years old. I went to King's College. Um, must have been a rugby scholarship. No. he. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sweet Kings. No, steal all this talent from outside. No, so uh, uh, really talented. He just carved up. You sound like Kempe. <laughs> <laughs> no, he just carved up as a, um, he, he's like a centre, come through the grades as a fullback. Um, but they played him in the halves on the weekend for State Cup and, uh, man, carved up and so a real real talent uh very much like his mm. uncle but probably um can tackle better than his uncle <laughs> oh, sorry ali <laughs> <laughs> he did get a little bit tired there ali we had to keep him on the bench for a few weeks mate dude, it's not just about rugby league down at the club you're doing some really good work too uh which people probably don't see the jury susu that's been working tirelessly over the last decade in and around that well-being and that mental health space tell us a little bit about that yeah, well, the club's got a neat association with a group called Leva, who are quite big in the Pacifica Health space. Uh, they're one of the leading uh, non-government agencies. And so uh, there is a link, ne link there. And so we're getting down to the community with our local rugby league clubs and talking uh, about mental health and how do we... So we're just giving tools and strategies that we can manage our own mental health. And, man, it's been well-received and... Um, as you've been going off in the local community and teams love it, we even um, started doing rugby clubs, um, uh, Maris Rugby uh, this this year. Um, so, um, yeah, there's a need out there, eh? And um, and so we're just using the the profile, the opportunity to get into those spaces and say, hey, it's all right to talk about uh, that aspect of life, um, you know, mental health that we don't tend to uh, speak about a lot, especially as men. 
uh, and then just give it uh, a safe space that we can have those conversations. Yeah, and and how have you found? I guess our not not just our community, but our our players that are coming through the football careers jury, and then finding themselves coming out the back end of it, not knowing what to do. How have you how have you found having you know been a mentor, having to deal with that? That's a, that's that's a massive part of it, Kimpy. And so you know, even now we're um, guys that are retired three, four, five years. You know, they're they're touching base again and saying, "Hey, can you help us with this? Um, I'm a little bit stuck at the moment." So. You know, it's an ongoing journey, um, and you guys would identify as you probably know this as well. You know, um, so for a lot of guys, the the identity is locked into rugby league, and so when it finishes, mm. it, it takes a bit of an effort and a step to transition out of that. So, for some of them, it's still a work in progress. A lot of good success stories, uh, but a, a, at the same time, some guys still are working through that. We've got uh, um, new teams coming through at the at the Warriors, bringing back the SG Ball, obviously, and the and and New South Wales Cup teams and things. In terms of the pathways that you know, there's a playing pathway, but what are, what is set up with the club around professional development for if you get a career-ending injury or, or whatever it happens to be to set these guys up post-league? post, post league? Yeah, well, it was a big investment from the NRO at the moment and the club. Uh, there's myself, um, Anthony Galling, uh, Lisa and Armel, uh, and a guy called um, Jace, who, um, you know, three ex-players and a couple of other staff members who just to help with that uh, in terms of career coaching, transition training, and um, well-being planning, we call it. So again, it's to try and start that journey uh, away from the game while they're still playing. Uh, and different back in the day, I remember a mm. coach that we had once said to me, you know, don't worry about off-field, you know, the rugby league field is the best place to die. It wasn't Kimpy, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> the guy was also a legend. But, you know, that was just a different mindset back in the day. So we've evolved a lot, uh, but there's still some work awesome. to be done. Mm. I love that. Absolutely love that. It's one of the biggest challenges, Jerry, when you finish is like, who are you? What am I? You know, you still got 20, 30, 40 years to, to go out there and earn and, and create a life for, for your family and future. And one thing, the bills don't stop coming in. So I actually 100%. love that hearing that you're working on that with players outside of rugby. If you're concentrated on that one thing, it's in uh, come back and surprise you and bite you right on the backside. But Jerry, look, I want to ask you about Kempe. Kempe has spoken a lot about his coaching style. He particularly brought up the sandpit. The sandpit drills and getting in the sandpit and absolutely smashing each other. What was Kempe like as a coach, mate? And do you enjoy your time with Tony? Got any stories? I've got one story, <laughs> but before the story, um, I've got to say, um, when I when I when I got when I when Kempe got to the club, um, I was a bit of a crossroads in terms of my own career. You know, played a bit of first grade, but hadn't quite cracked it. And uh, Kempe was part of a coaching staff that um, that I thrived under. So I'm always grateful and thankful. Just want to take the opportunity mm. to say that. Uh, and Kempe was kind of young too, so he was easier to relate to as the one of the mm. coaches. Uh, and he, we knew he played, so he had that pedigree. Um, so that was that was cool. Easy to, um, yeah, man. We always coming to. <laughs> Kimmy to complain actually. Kimby, I got to complain. No, um, so you know he was that guy. It was easy to uh, to go see Kimby and and the fact that he was a brown fella, not that we were racist, but you know it just it was able we were just able to relate better to the the coaching stuff through Kimby. Um, and Daniel was amazing as well. So um, so that was Kimby. But no, here's a funny story though. I mean, Kimby used to take us for conditioning, and then. Um, and then the Californias, he loved it. With the Kempi's Californias, say hey. anyway. And then one day, his good mate Kevin Edel um, comes and visits, and he goes to us, Kempi, is Kempi in charge of conditioning? And he just starts cracking up. Because he that guy never did conditioning. But what made it even more funny was um, so anyway, I retired two thousand and five, and I went back to train with the boys two thousand. Uh, oh, 2004, sorry, I retired in 2005. I go back to train all the boys. Kempi's got him for preseason. So bear in mind, Kempi's had us for conditioning for these last few years. And one of the things I hear him say in the staff meeting is, these guys are unfit. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it was a moose. You know, we're in charge of conditioning. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, no. He's been talking to Gary Jack too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, no, actually, Kempi was really, really cool. Like I say, thrived under him and um, really enjoyed our awesome. time. Mate, you've got to, <laughs> thanks for that, Jez. And, and look, look, one thing people don't know about Jerry is that me and Ando, we knew that this kid called Jerry Susu could be the most feared front row in the competition and, and gave Jerry that confidence to, to do that. There was mm -hmm. one game that sticks in my mind, and I remember I was leading the offensive analysis. Um, Jez, I don't know if you remember, we went up to Newcastle and I said, just get off your outside foot and go back behind the ruck. And um, it was just one of those battles that you toughed out. And in the end, I think it was, you know, we, we 
Joey Johns was running at Cutter. We got them in the end because you bashed them up through the middle of the ruck. Um, what what do you see these days when you're looking at those front rows that have got the fancy footwork, you know, that all move before the line? Because you were that front row that just got, got the ball and said, right, oh, follow me. There was no stepping. There was, but um, it was subtle. Uh, no, it's... Uh, <laughs> No, you're right. I appreciate that too, Kempe. You know, there was a lot of good coaching back in the day. And um, like I say, even even these days, it's it's a little, little bit more subtle in terms of what they need to do, places they need to get to on the field. So you appreciate what they're doing, what they do. But like I said, that's why probably Adam is good. And I, I like watching him um, because he has got the late feet. But man, his, his post-contact meters is enormous. Eh? So... Um, so technically speaking, yeah, anything like that is awesome, and I think the the Warriors are in good stead in terms of their front row stock at the moment. Mate, just before we let you go, they got Canberra this week. It's a obviously a, a bit of a game for Canberra down there with Croker playing his three hundredth game, and and I said to the boys yesterday, Ricky will get him up because he's an angry little man. Um, you think we can get the job done? How important is it to win this game going in the bye? Um, very important going into the bye, um, but you know what it's like, Kempi. You know, sometimes you like to go and spoil a party, you know. So um, it'll be interesting to see what the boys do in terms of that. I'm looking forward to seeing young Ali go out there and just do his thing. Yeah, good I'm telling you, he's a talent, and um, and hopefully he's you know the, the surprise packet that'll help the boys get over the line. Yeah, I mean, it's okay, a, good in rugby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he would. He would. I was going <laughs> to say it's, 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 it's important too because you know this this isn't just another game. This is a team that probably we're going to be fighting out with for one of those five to eight spots with the playoffs. So this is almost a four point game in that way. Hundred percent. So they're, they're just up in front of us in terms of the table and just where we are in terms of the season. Um, the further up you can climb on that ladder, especially what the state of origin stuff is on, mm. is, is critical. So. Um, yeah, the, you know how it is. The boys love to get. It's a four point game, basically. You go into the bye, you know, you, you're relaxing, chilled, but, you know, you, because you got two points from the bye and two points from a win. Yeah, massive. Jerry, thanks very much for coming in today. Uh, there's a cafe just out there. Just put it everything on Kempi's oh, Kempi, tab. Everything? Yeah, Big yeah. breakfast? Yeah. Big breakfast, oh, everything, sweet. mate. You're good. You're good. You're golden. Thank you very much for coming in and having a chat with us on Izzy and Kempi for breakfast. No, thank you very much for having me. SCNZ. It's Kiwi for Sport.